it's really looking good. Uh, the uh, it's the silver panels that are reflecting back uh, real brightly. They're awful nice right now too. Right, the, the resolution is fantastic. You're yeah. drifting off just to the right a little bit. We're looking right into the nose of the third stage of the Saturn rocket. And the lunar module is there in its garage, or the lunar adapter. And we see the nose of it. Cernan told us a little while ago that he hoped he could see the Earth. Okay. This is a fascinating picture and has more scientific value uh, for the Houston, uh, you can't believe the picture we're getting. The resolution is really fantastic. I'll tell you, this monitor makes it great. More significance for the uh, space scientists and the engineers and technicians right at this moment. Uh, I'm sure that Cernan will give us that picture of Earth if he possibly can. They are out ahead of the... How's the color, Charlie? Say again? How's the color? Hey, it's uh, really beautiful, uh, Gene. Uh, you got it right. You got it framed just perfectly. Resolution. Okay, I think the color will be beautiful once we can show you the Earth. Right. That's a little 12-pound camera, 12-pound color camera, and the monitor is just three pounds, fits on the side of it. And it's just about a two-and-a-quarter by a three-and-a-quarter picture what they're looking at in their monitor. Now, they're out ahead of the uh, of that third stage. Oh, Snoopy sure looks good. Yeah. He sure do. Snoopy is a lunar module. They're, they're calling uh, the lunar module Snoopy for this mission, and the command module will be circling alone over the moon. Oh, Charlie Brown's a massive cord and wire floating around here, though. <laughs> I can imagine. The Earth, it would be in the background there somewhere, not obviously on the picture, but they're out ahead of the third stage and looking back at it with Earth beyond it somewhere in the background. The moon is to their backs. It looks like the, we have a bright spot, uh, maybe on your Viticon, coming in on your Viticon tube on the black and white. It's right above the uh, the, the drogue. Now, we've got it in real life. The, uh, I'm, the camera's fully in the shade. Uh, that's just a reflection coming right off the uh, right off of Snoopy. Right. Ken, uh, we, we're afraid you might be burning a, a hole into your Viticon tube. Uh, move it off uh, to the, a little bit off for Snoop. Uh, I think it's, those panels are so bright we might be getting problems with the Viticon tube. All right. If they've already got it, they've got a little bit of a bright spot you see that stays there. Even though they pan off, stays there right on your screen and ours in the center. Not too severe. I can just cover it up for a while if you'd like. Stand by. And he's got his hand in front of the lens now. <laughs> It'd be pretty hard for our cameraman here to do. Their arms aren't long enough to go around the camera in the first place, and their hands aren't big enough to cover the lens. We have other things that get in the way of our pictures. Well, at least we had a great moment of excitement and, uh, there, Houston, thinking that like was the, the uh, uh, Snoopy back. It still looks it a little bit like it. I'd be glad to. Hey, that's looking great now, except for a couple of fingers there or something. Good resolution. That's what they were. 
You got your big hands in the way. Yeah. Hey, I don't know what you did, but the, uh, it's a really beautiful now. Really great. We're just a little closer. Yeah. And hey, the car is great, Gene. Oh, that's for the front porch. Oh, boy, that's beautiful. Those are the steps leading down from the uh, lunar module. Those are the 10 steps, which were carried yeah, well, to the moon too. circuit I got to get on a future window. flight. What's that guy doing on the front porch? That's the green man, Gordo. Just think. Yeah, John information 50 feet close. Roger. These two ships are moving along 50 feet apart, 25,000 miles an hour. 10,000 miles from the Earth's surface. Well, all I can say is it's really happening, and what hasn't happened, you haven't seen yet. Roger. Really great resolution. That was Gordon Cooper. He and Charlie Duke are both on the Capcom console. Gordon Cooper, one of the original Mercury astronauts. And that orange platform is the front porch. The front porch is a little area out of which the men in the lunar module will leave the lunar module and then down those steps to the surface of the moon on the flight of 11, which it will go to July if this flight continues to go as successfully as it has in these first Three hours and 15 minutes. Four hours and 15 minutes now. Three hours and 15 minutes. My computer back. They've got a very small angle of uh, error possible there. I can't, it's looking real stable to us. We show you closed and climbing. Okay. This is like parking a brand new limousine in a garage in which you've got about a quarter of an inch clearance on either side. I want to scrape those new fenders. They can't afford to scrape their fenders uh, in this mission. They're moving in there at less than about a third of a mile an hour. They could go, oh, perhaps 15, 16 times that fast before they would uh, undergo serious damage in a too hard a meeting. But they can't be off the line very far as they insert that docking probe into the docking column. Roger. This is John Young, veteran of two previous Gemini missions at the controls. We can read, read the uh, numbers on the lamb right, uh, docking window. <laughs> Those are gradations etched in the window of the lunar module. We're there. Got two grades. Roger. You saw the docket, Charlie. We 
Didn't get any master alarm. Everything looks snug. Roger. Didn't look like there was any, uh, hardly any, uh, after dock, post docking and constellation. Jump. They didn't bump scarcely at all. Just slid together there. You can see the uh, docking window of the lunar module. It has, I'd say, gradations on it to aid okay, in the alignment of off. its docking. Roger. You can see the uh, 